Good morning. My name is Brian Perrin. I'm here with uh, ECC and today we're going to be talking about running compression tests. So to do a running compression test I'm going to need a couple tools and I'm going to be doing it on this stand engine to give better visibility. This happens to be out of a Hyundai uh, accent. So the first tool I'm going to need is a compression test gauge and I'm going to need an adapter for the compression test gauge that has the correct threads here that goes into the engine I'm going to be working on. I've already pre-selected this adapter. And then the adapter also has a Schrader valve on the end of it so that each time the compression stroke pumps, we're going to hold pressure in this hose and gauge. The other tools I'm going to need is I'm going to need a tool for removing my 10 millimeter. I'm going to use a little cordless tool. I'm going to need a socket for my spark plug. I'm using a universal with a locket extension. I like these because that way I can't lose the extension down inside or lose the spark plug socket inside on the spark plug. I'm also going to use a ratchet to turn it with. So that's what we're going to be doing with our running compression test today. Our running compression test, we're going to do one cylinder at a time. And running compression should be half of our cranking compression in a perfect world. In reality, we have to compare it to the other cylinders. So we're going to do more than one cylinder, and they should both be about the same. Normally, we would do a running compression test on a cylinder that is not producing good power or setting a misfire code. And remember, running compression tests for breathing, not for sealing. So what we're really testing for here is are the valves opening properly, both the intake valve and exhaust valve, and can my engine breathe? We're not looking for leaking valves and we're not looking for leaking rings. We do that with a cranking compression test. Okay, so we're gonna start with taking out the coil. So I'm gonna start with number one cylinder here. Number one is the cylinder closest to the front of the engine on this vehicle. I'm gonna disconnect the electrical connector. I did that by pulling down the lock, depressing here, and I was able to remove it off the coil. Next, I'm gonna take the 10 millimeter out I'm going to break it loose by hand and then just use the cordless to take the 10 millimeter bolt out. And here's my ignition coil. I'm actually going to put the coil back on here and I'm going to use a tool called a spark tester. This is a 30,000 volt spark tester and I'm going to insert it into here and I'm going to attach it to ground. In this case on my intake manifold. If I couldn't reach ground I could use a jumper wire. The reason why I'm using the spark tester instead of just leaving this free is I don't want to damage the coil because remember coils will only make as much voltage as required. So if I make a jump I could actually burn out the coil. If I don't plug anything at all on some vehicles such as BMW, I'll actually blow the transistor out of the compu computer and now I need a computer because I did a compression test. So the safest thing to do if you don't know how something works, let's reassemble it so it's going to operate in a safe condition and I can't damage the car. The last thing we want to do is do one test and create another problem. This is also a great opportunity for watch how good my ignition system is working at the same time and it proves that the coil and everything on this cylinder is working. Now I'm going to take the spark plug out. So I've got my spark plug socket and extension. It's going to go in, lock it in place, use my ratchet, flip it to off, break it loose. And now I love this ratchet because I can do this. And it makes it much quicker. Oops, didn't get it yet. A little bit more. And there we go. And we see the spark plug socket nicely holds it in place. Now I'm going to install my compression gauge. And I just need to go snug with it. Don't over tighten it. Occasionally these will get stuck down in there or the hoses come loose. And if you get it stuck down there, it's extremely difficult to get out. However, there is a tool that can help you. These are special pliers for grabbing hoses. I introduced them during my vacuum hose testing. These will actually go down in the hole and on many times I can grab it and break it loose. So these come in three different sizes and for that I might use a smaller size. I would be able to go down and grab it all the way down inside there and break it loose in case it gets stuck. So things happen. The important thing is how do I deal with it when it happens and that's where other tools come in. 
So now I'm going to attach my compression gauge, and we always want to do this on an engine that's been previously warmed up. I've already got this engine to operate temperature, and I have the gauge right here. When I first start it, we're going to watch the pressure go much higher than we want. I'm going to use the, the Schrader valve here to release all the pressure, and then we're going to watch it get five puffs. So let me start it up. And we see we're running rough. I'm only on three cylinders. You can hear the spark. Oops. Now we're actually jumping two places. I really don't want to grab it. And you heard it just stop. And I'm going to shut that off so it doesn't grab me here. And let's try to get that back on. Actually, I'll try going here. But best laid plans, so let's go another way and grab a wire. And I just grabbed a jumper wire, so I'm going to use my jumper wire, throw it right on here. And now I can take this and I can run this to any ground or on the battery. I'm just going to run it onto a ground down here that I can secure it to. And now I've got a nice... Now I don't need to worry about it jumping around. See, I have some pressure here. I'm going to bleed this out. I'm going to watch it pump back up. And I kind of want to bleed it up so it stops. It's going slower than it should because the Schrader valve in the bottom probably got a little more resistance, a little spring pressure. But I pumped up here to 80 PSI. I'm going to bleed it off again. PSI. So what I want to do is I want to do this a couple times. I should come up to the same pressure. Um, I can also do a snap test on this where I should get two to three times this. I'm not going to do that because anytime I do a snap test, I usually break the Schrader valve and I'm running out of Schrader valve. Uh, some books tell you we want to do it at 1100 or 1200 RPM. I'm going to bring the engine RPM up just a little bit. Sitting right around 60. Again, I'm looking for consistency. The reason why it's lower is I have more volumetric efficiency. I'm not pulling as much air into compress, and therefore I have lower pressure. So whether I'm doing this at idle or I'm doing it at 1200 RPM, I want to do all the cylinders the same way. So what I'm going to do now is reassemble this cylinder and do number two cylinder and see what we have there. Remember, what did we get here? We had 80 PSI at idle. So let's see what we have at idle on the next one. And we had about 60 PSI at 12, around 1200 RPM. If I really wanted to see the RPM, I'd actually put a tachometer on. So if I was going to use that for a test, I would need to use a tachometer or I wouldn't be consistent. Okay, so I got cylinder number two hooked up. I have my uh, coil hooked up to my spark tester, which I grounded ahead of time after what happened on the last one. And so let's start this up and see if we have the same number as we do in number one. Because remember, the whole idea behind this is I'm comparing normally a cylinder that's not working to a cylinder that's working properly. If they're the same, hello, that's not your problem. If they're different, then I would do a third cylinder because I want to see two the same. So unlike our uh, cranking compression that has a specification from the manufacturer, running compression, we really need to compare the cylinder that's having a problem to the cylinder that's good. And that's why we don't do a running compression on all the cylinders. We're really using it to try to locate a valve issue where the valve's not opening correctly or opening far enough, which usually indicates something like a camshaft problem. So let me start this up. And let's bleed this out. Up. And I'm a little bit lower. I'm at uh, only 70 here. And I'm definitely only at 70 here. So I'm a little bit off. I'm within 10%. If I had a problem with cylinder number one, I'd do a third cylinder. If all the other cylinders are 70 and number one's at 80, that would tell me that I have an exhaust valve that's not opening all the way, causing a little bit of extra pressure to stay trapped. 
Now I'm at 75. So again, and maybe my engine, so I can also rev it up a little bit and see what we have at the higher RPM. I'm at 75, so 5 PSI among friends, not a big deal. If I had a problem, I'm going to see a much bigger difference.